Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I will be doing some examples involving rewriting functions in power function form and then differentiating. This is material from section 2.5, basic differentiation properties. Uh, it's from middle of page 148 to the top of page 151. And it's similar to stuff that's done in parts of examples 4, 5, and 6. And these five homework problems from section 2.5. Now, recall the derivative rules that we've learned about in previous videos. The constant function rule, used for finding the derivative of a constant function. The power rule, used for finding the derivative of a power function. And the sum and constant multiple rule, used for finding the derivatives of things that are built like this. A sum of terms that are each a constant multiple times a function. So those are derivative rules that we worked with in the last couple of videos. We're not going to learn any new derivative rules in this video. We're just going to use these three. But we're going to use these three in harder examples where you have to rewrite the function first before you can use these rules. So here's our first example. It's similar to 2.5 number 45. Find f prime for this function. Well, notice that that function is written in positive exponent form. We need to put it into power function form to take the derivative. So there, we rewrote the function f of x in power function form. We have not taken the derivative. We're just getting ready to take the derivative. So in fact, that's what we'll do now. So I set this up the way that I often set up the derivative problems. I write down the derivative that we're going to do, but I don't do it in the first step. The first step is just to simply write down the thing that we're going to be doing. Now we'll use the sum and constant multiple rule. So there's the result of using the sum and constant multiple rule. We don't do those derivatives at that step. We just set them up, and we say that we're going to be doing them in the next step. So the derivative on the left is easy. Its derivative is 0. Now the next term has a constant multiple 13. That's different from the constant function. So 13 stays out front and gets multiplied by an empty pair of parentheses, where we're going to put the result of this derivative. Now that derivative is the derivative of a power function with n equals negative 1. So we use the power rule with n equals negative 1. The result is We get minus 13 times x to the minus 2 on this line. That is in power function form. We convert to positive exponent form for the final answer. So our final result is that f prime of x is equal to this. Now, this is an interesting example. We just found f prime for this function. f of x was 7 plus 13 over x. We've done that before. We found the derivative of that same function in the video for homework 27, example 1. And in that example, we used the definition of the derivative, which was much harder. That's similar to one of the book exercises from section 2.4. That's the section where we have to use the definition of the derivative. So now we've seen two ways of computing the derivative of this function, using section 2.4 techniques, that is the definition of the derivative, and then using section 2.5 techniques, which is the sum and constant multiple rule and the power rule. The next example is to find f prime of x for this function. All right, well, we're going to do the same thing to start with, we're going to rewrite the function in power function form.
once we have the f function written in that form, we can find the derivative. We set it up the same way. We write f prime of x equals on the left, and then we write on the right side how we will start to find f prime of x. So I just write down the derivative that I'm going to be doing. Now we do what we always do. We start with the sum and constant multiple rule. The result of that will be this. So the multiplicative constant, 13, came out front. The number 7, though, that's not a multiplicative constant. That's a constant function. So it just stays there, and we're going to take its derivative. When we take its derivative, we get 0. Then we write 13 times parentheses. The parentheses are where we're going to put the results of doing this derivative. Now we're taking the derivative of a power function with n equals 1 half. So we're going to use the power rule with n equals 1 half. The result of that is 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1. Now let's simplify. Now that's in power function form. So let's convert this to positive exponent form. Now let's convert this to a more familiar form. x to the 1 half is just square root of x. So we found that f prime of x is equal to 13 over 2 square root of x. And then in the last line, we converted to radical form. In general, I'm not a big fan of radical forms that are the complicated ones, but for the simple square root radical, I like square root of x. It's a nice familiar function form. All right, well, this example was also one that we've done before. So we just found the derivative of this using the sum and constant multiple rule and the power rule. But in a previous video, that video for homework 27, example 2, which was similar to a book exercise from section 2.4, we used the harder definition of the derivative method. So in section 2.4, we were learning about that, and we did this derivative that way. It was very hard. Uh, and now we've done it in an easier way, and the two methods give the same result. On to our next example. In this example, which is similar to three exercises from the book, we're supposed to find h prime of t if h of t is this function. So our solution approach is the same that we've been doing. We start by rewriting the function in power function form. So we have h of t on the left, and I'm going to write down the given form for now. Now I'm going to do the rewriting in two stages. I'm going to separate the constants first, and then the next thing is to convert these two terms to power function form. This is very useful because, remember, we when we take the derivative, we have a constant multiple rule. So it helps if you have a constant multiple multiplying a function. So that's the form that I wanted. I wanted my functions to be in power function form, and I wanted the multiples, the constant multiples, to be separate in front. Now here, we have just been rewriting. We have not done any derivative. The first step is to just rewrite the function in the form where the derivative is possible. Now we'll find the derivative. So there's our original function with the d over dt parked out front. Now we'll apply the sum and constant multiple rule. The result of that will be this new expression. Notice that those constant multiples came right through the derivative symbols. And notice that I don't do those derivatives at the same time that I do the sum and constant multiple rule. 
I just do one rule at a time. Those derivatives are set up for the next step. So we'll start the next step by writing down the things that will not be changing. We'll have these constant multiples sitting next to empty parentheses. What goes in those parentheses? Well, here we have a power function with n equals negative one third. So when I use the power rule with n equals negative one third, the result looks like this. Notice I don't do that arithmetic in my head. I just write it down. It's going to get done in the next step. So here is the left side of the power rule with the d over dt in the original function. And here is the right side of the power rule. The d over dt is gone. I have brought down the old exponent. And I've created a new exponent with this bit of arithmetic. Now over on the right, I have another power function with n equals negative 2 fifths. So when I apply the power rule here with n equals negative 2 fifths, the result looks like this. So in this step, I use the power rule. Now we clean up. We multiply the constants together. So that's going to be minus 7 over 15. And then this is going to be t to the minus 4 thirds. And then in the next term, we multiply the constants together. And then we simplify the exponent. And then we convert to positive exponent form. And we combine stuff. Notice a couple of things. In this term, the 7 stayed up top. It did not go down to the denominator. Because the negative exponent was only attached to the t. So that drags the t down to the denominator, but the 7 stays up top. In this term, the exponent negative 7 fifths is only attached to the t. So only the t gets pulled down to the denominator. The 6 stays up top. And there's our result. That is h prime of t. At the end of that example, we have one example left. Our fourth example, we're supposed to find y prime if y is this mess. Well, remember that the theme for this video is derivatives where you have to rewrite the function first and then take the derivative. So we're going to rewrite the function in power function form. How will that work? Well, let's start by just writing down the original function. And then let's just break it up into three separate functions, each with the same denominator. And then let's simplify each of these terms. That's a rewritten version of our function, but it's not quite in power function form because of this term. This is not in power function form. So we have one more step. This is power function form. So now let's take the derivative. We'll take the same approach. We'll write down what we're going to be computing. We're going to be computing y prime. So I write y prime equals. And then I write down how one does that. You do d dx of 2x squared minus 4 plus 2x to the minus 2. So I just set up the derivative but didn't do it yet. Now we're going to do what we've been doing in all these examples. We'll start by using the sum and constant multiple rule. The result of that will be the following. Notice that the constant multiples slipped right through the derivative symbols. That 2 came through and that 2 came through. But this 4 did not come through. That's not a constant multiple. It's a constant function. So it has to sit there and endure the derivative. All right, so in the next step, we're going to use our derivative rules. We're going to have this 2 multiplying a pair of parentheses, where I'll put the result of that derivative. And then I'm going to have minus 0, because 4 is a constant function. So we use the constant function rule. And then I'll have 2 times another pair of parentheses. Now, in the left parentheses, I'm going to put the result of the derivative that's indicated there. So I have the power of rule with n equals 2. So the result will be 
x to the 2 minus 1. On the right, I have this derivative, which is a power function with n equals minus 2. So I'm going to use the power rule with n equals minus 2. And the result will be minus 2 times x to the minus 2 minus 1. So there is a result of my derivative. Now let's clean it up. So there is the result in power function form, but let's simplify it and convert to positive exponent form. The result will be 4x minus 4 over x cubed. Again, that negative 3 exponent is only attached to the x, so it pulls the x down to the denominator. It does not affect that 4. That 4 stays in the numerator. And that's our result. y prime is this function. That's the end of the example, and that's the end of the video.